Okay, hey, uh, my name is Stuart Van Hooser. I'm the Chief of Police in Cobb County. Today we responded to a shooting at Kitchener High School at 1.47 p.m. Um, what I want to do is just kind of give an update of where we are right now. Before I do that, I would like to introduce the folks behind me or have them introduce themselves so everybody knows who they represent and what their names are. And um, I'll be the main spokesperson, but if y'all have questions that I can't answer, of course, uh, the individuals behind me, I'm sure, can. So, uh, if we'll start on this end. Good afternoon. I'm Lieutenant Wilson with the Cobb School District Police Department. Good afternoon. John Floresta, Chief Strategy Officer here with the school district. Good afternoon. Uh, Drake Longness, Vice President of Operations for Puckett EMS. Good afternoon, Nick Adams, Division Chief of EMS for Cobb County Fire and Emergency Services. Okay, and this is a little bit on the fly, so just forgive me. We've got some notes written down here. I want to try to make sure that we don't miss anything big, but obviously at the end we'll get some questions answered if we can. Uh, as I said, it was 1.47 uh, p.m. today. Um, before I really get into the details, I would like to note very much the unbelievable cooperation that we have between not only law enforcement in this region, but also the various aspects of public safety in general and even our community. As you can see, we have borrowed several churches today and um, it's necessary at times for us just to uh, collaborate together. Uh, I can tell you that on the law enforcement side, of course, Cobb County School District Police, uh, it's obviously their, their campus we're instrumental in the response to this today very quickly. Uh, of course, our officers, the Cobb County police officers, I'll talk more about uh, law enforcement in a few minutes at the end, but uh, of course, excellent response there too. We had Cobb County Sheriff's Office respond with us. We had the city of Powder Springs respond, Georgia State Patrol. I think I saw Marietta there. Our cities probably more than that were there. So hats off to all the law enforcement that came out to help us. Cobb Fire, Cobb 911, not only with dispatching and receiving these calls, but also coming down to the scene and actually helping us with tactical dispatch. And of course, Puckett EMS, who were instrumental actually helping these uh, victims today. So at 147, our uh, 911 center got a call about a shooting at McKitcher High School. We responded to that shooting along initially with the Cobb County School District Police. Um, obviously, it's never a good day when we're coming to you about a shooting of any kind. In this case, we had two people shot um, on the campus of a high school, so we've got some young people hurt um, and potentially some young people involved on the uh, periphery of this event. So obviously, we have a serious and tragic uh, incident. The good news is that both victims are alive. They are being treated at Kennestone Hospital, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Um, and both, in our judgment, both appear that they will survive these wounds. The two victims were not students at McKitcher High School. That's noteworthy. It's also noteworthy that this occurred in the parking lot of the school, not inside the school. Having said that, there is still an active crime scene at that location, and anyone headed that direction, we would suggest that you not come that direction. There is a family re reunification site, but uh, as the school will speak in just a few minutes, the, uh, the school is returning kids home. So there is not a need to come to that location, and traffic is, of course, very bad. Um, the preference is, is that folks not come down to the scene until we get it cleared out a little bit. The students are safe. Um, the uh, campus is secured and has been for quite some time. This was never an active shooter. This was not that type of instance. I will say this. Um, when we get these calls, we don't know if it's an active shooter or not. And so our officers treat it as it is an active shooter. And we train for this along with everybody behind me every single year in Cobb County. And we know how to handle these. And a chief is usually at a desk working. But when something like this happens, he gets in the car, he turns the radio on and he listens. 
And what it hears are heroes going into a school that is not safe for them and not safe for the people in there. And to hear that brings a somberness and a gratefulness to these officers and all the DPS people, the Department of Public Safety people that, that help us with this, this type of work. Um, it's just a reminder of how thankful we should be for our police officers, for our firefighters, for our 911 operators, for our EMS folks. And uh, my hat is off to what I heard on the radio with our officers going into that school today, as it was about a year ago when they went into the Walmart on uh, Barrett Parkway. So if you could, appreciate, pray for, and uh, really lift up all of our public safety personnel in Metro Atlanta. Um, last thing I'll say is that um, we've had some, we've had a lot of guns in Metro Atlanta in the last several years. We've had a lot, we've had some increases in violent crime and this is a dangerous environment for our officers to be working in and uh, the cognition and the, the being cognizant of, of the total criminal justice system and how it works together to protect people from these types of incidents. These individuals are far too young to be involved in the type of thing that they're involved in today. So supporting uh, and being active in helping us put the right people in place in, in uh, the various aspects of the criminal justice system to make sure that we're all on the same page about how dangerous these guns in the hands of criminals are. Um, I, John, would you like to speak uh, quickly? Uh, I'll take questions after he says what he has to say, and then if there are any questions of him or I or anybody else here, we'll take those questions. Appreciate that. And the only thing that I could add to uh, what Chief just mentioned is, is on the back of the uh, safety measures that you heard Chief say worked. Um, I, we could not be prouder as a district of uh, the staff and the students and the community who came together to keep our students safe. Uh, the investment that our board has made and our superintendent have made over the years, you might have heard a phrase, safety is our number one priority. That really hits home on a day like today. And we're very proud of the work of our staff uh, and frankly our parents. We know it's a scary, scary time for parents. As soon as you get that email, text, um, and uh, our staff responded quickly and most importantly our students are safe while the investigation continues and certainly chief has already spoken to that um, we're confident that our staff did their jobs did their jobs well and that the investments we've made into safety measures for our students um, they worked uh, just more operationally we do have students being released from campus as we speak buses are rolling getting kids home and if you're a mom or a dad who's hearing this and you're uh, in a car on the way to campus we'd ask that you meet at the uh, Church of Latter-day Saints right around the corner. You have that detail information in your inbox or text message as you as a parent would have preferred. And you'll be directed uh, again on campus, escorted by PD to make sure that you're able to get your child as fast as humanly possible. But again, campus is safe based on the recommendation of our PD and uh, based on the recommendation of COP PD as you heard. Um, it's been a scary day, but we're thankful for the partnerships that you see represented behind us and the priority that our board and superintendent have put on uh, student safety. Are there any questions? Chief, you said that uh, they weren't students at this school. Are they students at any Cobb County school? Were they students previously at this school? Do you know the relationship, why they were there at that exact moment when all this unfolded this afternoon? No, sir, we do not know the answers to those questions. Um, our primary concern today was to stabilize the situation, make sure the uh, kids were safe, uh, teachers were safe, their officers were safe. And uh, But I, I will say this, those things, of course, would be determined in the investigation. And much of that is probably not going to be released anytime soon. Uh, we did verify with the school that the two individuals that were hurt were not students because we knew there was a, a concern from parents of students at the school that their children might be in harm's way. Are those two people, were they shooting at each other or is there still a shooter out there that you guys are looking for? We are still looking for suspects in this case. Suspects? We do have descriptions, but I do not have them. 
uh, and they are sometimes conflicting in early stages of the investigation. You said suspects, so multiple. Like, yes, sir. Okay. And we don't know that we have multiple shooters. We just know that there were multiple people on site when this shooting occurred. And you mentioned um, that it, the school here is safe, but there were reports that other schools, area hospitals, and things like that were on lockdown. Can you talk about the answer response and how, when those were pulled back? I don't know when those were pulled back. I don't know if, if, if John made, but yeah. I, I can just I, I've referenced some of those procedures and, and processes to make sure the kids stay safe across the county. Anytime there's an incident in a school, we assess the surrounding area and surrounding schools. In this case, uh, Varner and Compton Elementary schools that we just put into a, a code yellow, a soft lockdown, just out of an abundance of caution. There's no specific threat that we are aware of and that we don't believe exists, but we just want to make sure we're taking that extra step towards safety. And those code yellows have been lifted as well. And those buses should already have students at home as we speak. And Chief, um, to you, um, there is a video of this incident um, that has been widely circulating on um, the internet. Is it safe to say that's how, or that's part of the shooting, or not yet? I've seen two videos of this. I assume that it is this shooting. I cannot confirm that right this second. But again, those will be those details will be discovered as our investigators continue to investigate. They're already um, investigating right now on multiple fronts. But uh, but yes, I assume that's an assumption on my part that that is actually um, the shooting that we're talking about. Yes, ma'am. Another follow-up in that video, it appears that um, those individuals had those weapons. Um, I know it was in the parking lot, but is there any indication that? I don't know that, and that would probably be a detail we would not release anyway. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Might be for Bob. Um, I know most teachers are equipped with those panic button lanyard things. Were those used today? I can't, that's not the way we found out administratively. I think you heard Chief reference the 911 call, but I can tell you that that system works and has been activated on campus. I can't tell you whether that was the first thing that happened today, but it's certainly been part of that process that I referenced and part of that investment we've made to make sure that we're ready for uh, a day like today. Um, and it certainly worked the way it was intended. Chief, one more question for you, I'm so sorry. Um, this collaboration, how, how relieved were you guys when you realized that this was not an active shooter situation where someone is on campus, um, you know, going door to door or classroom to classroom, um, and that not that this is a good circumstance, but that it was a force? That's hard to put into words. Um, the reason that the men and women put on the uniform is to be the one to go in that school in an active shooter. I know that's a dichotomy, but if you picture your own child in that school, you will know whether you would go in or not. And the thought of it, even with strangers, is bothersome to any law enforcement officer, any human being. But there's a huge difference between a shooting and an active shooter. And so I don't really know how I could contain that in words. I think it's probably how each of you feel, except a little closer to home because I know I have my police officers going into that scene and I know how amazingly dangerous it is, but it also makes me love them and want to protect them more. So um, that's the best I can do to try to put in words how thankful I am that this was not actually an active shooter. the ground we, we 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 well yes on the ground I mean we, we believe that the shooters probably left and we have our our lookouts are out to law enforcement and we're trying to more specifically define that lookout right now there are incredible detectives who have a hundred percent clearance rate in their homicides for several years now I have the utmost confidence that they will refine that lookout and that they will um, help narrow the list of suspects down to something that's manageable so that we can make everybody safe and get these folks in custody. That's it. Anything else? All right. That's it. Thank you all.